spring in Paris, 1941. A dream of world conquest becoming a reality. Over the Eiffel Tower, over the cities and towns of Europe hangs a pall of fear and death. This could be London, England, or Buenos Aires. It could even be Main Street, USA. Main Street, USA has rolled up its sleeves to build and equip and train the best army in the world. This is rehearsal. Men getting to know their machines, learning how to handle them like experts, getting the feel of them and what they can do, learning how to land them on hostile beaches, going over obstacles, rubbing noses in the dirt together. Then maneuvers, the tough job of making a ground team. This is Fortress Europa. Unconquerable, Hitler said. Well, nobody thought it was going to be easy. D-Day, 1944, and the crucial days that followed. Ships and landing craft, men and tanks, yes. But that wasn't all. Gasoline and food, spare parts and medical supplies. Logistics, it's called. Getting the right number of tanks and men and supplies to the right place at the right time, making it stick. We did make it stick. We started moving inland. They say travel is broadening. Did you ever fight your way through hedgerows? They're about six feet wide and five feet high. Centuries of packing have made them hard as cement. At first, we tried dynamite and tank dozers to make a hole. We got through all right, but we had to funnel like ducks in a shooting gallery. Then a sergeant came up with a great idea, a hedge cutter. When they told General Bradley about it, he drove 60 miles to have a look and slapped top secret on it. Licked the hedgerow country and we pushed on. Tank men are ingenious. They have to be. They have to have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. Here's one. We learned that sandbags packed around a tank will absorb a lot of punishment that can keep a tankman's nerves on edge. We learned a lot of tricks about camouflage so we wouldn't stick out in Jerry's sight. In the beginning, a paint job was supposed to make us hard to see. But it wasn't enough. With a few cut branches, you can break up your telltale silhouette and be pretty hard to spot. With a net, you could blend a whole bivouac area into the scenery so that even low-flying planes won't see you. And if you have a terrain feature or something like a haystack, you can practically disappear. When winter came, we had another problem. But the tankers invented their own whitewash and almost disappeared against the snowy countryside. But always we kept moving, hitting Jerry deeper and deeper. Even when he wasn't fighting back, he made the going as tough as he could. Like this. You never knew where you'd find mines. Our friends, the British tankmen, invented this one. It's called a flail. It clears all mines from a path wide enough for a tank column to keep going. Snake was another mine eater. Filled with high explosives, they were pushed out into mine infested fields and, when detonated, blew up scores of enemy mines at a time. Always the push 20, 40, and more miles a day. Reconnaissance must be continuous. That's what it says in the book. One day, we found out that we were moving up parallel roads with a Nazi tank column. 
When they got to the junction, we were ready for them. It was tank against tank, and we blasted them into a tin hat. German tanks knew that ours were the most reliable, most maneuverable, the best man, and the best fought of any tanks in the world. They were at their greatest as a member of a team, infantry and tanks protecting each other. Sometimes you got held up by murderous fire from a blockhouse. Gary often put them just inside the woods. Even when you could spot them, they might be hard to blast out. Well, burn them out. Maybe you were in the Pacific. Then you know how 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit can save American lives. But with one thing and another, it got so the Nazis would rather surrender than fight our tankers. But with or without enemy, it's tough going through the woods. Time was when a thick woods was supposed to stop armor dead. When you've got the know-how, you'd be surprised where you can go and what you can do with a tank. On the other side of the woods, we hit a town. We must bypass this one. Our rocket launchers help soften them up. Then it's time to move in. Our supply lines have to go through this valley. Jerry knows it. This is the moment when knowing your job pays off. Building the building, door to door, you have to dig them out. They snipe from the buildings and barricade the streets. Slowly, surely, we clean them out and move on. momentum. Our pace becomes terrific for both men and machines. The powerful M26 joined us as we struck deep into the heart of Fortress Europa. Into the great cities of the German Reich itself. more signposts to pass, more miles to cover. But we had begun to know that we had won. Almost suddenly, the end came. People of Europe could look up again. They could cheer and laugh unafraid. Words like freedom, liberty, began to have meaning for them again. Paris, the great avenue leading down from the Arch of Triumph had been filled again. Filled with American tanks rolling proudly down to the great square which is called Concord. Tank mission accomplished.